Ladies and gents, welcome to Fun One CC. This video is actually part of a pair of videos which I'm posting covering my recent clear of the Alpha course in Raiden DX. I played the game on the Final Burn Neo emulator within RetroArch. The other video which I'm linking below shows my complete one credit clear of the game with a hand cam. This video which you're watching accompanies the main run and is a kind of behind the scenes video describing how I actually went about achieving the clear from start to finish. The footage you're seeing in the background here is actually an edited version of a different clear. That was my very first clear of the game where I limped over the line with no remaining lives, but I thought bits of it might be useful for comparison with the other video. I'm going to be including both the videos on a playlist on my channel, which I'm calling the Shmups Level Up playlist, and you can find a link to that in the description below. I'm going to do another video about the Shmups Level Up playlist, but for now let's get started on Raiden DX Alpha Course. First thing I really want to talk about is how I actually picked the game, because if you're anything like me, you have a Steam playlist full of exciting Shmups that you haven't cleared yet. So how to go about selecting the one that you want to do next? So I generally don't aim to do clears back to back. I, uh, I like to play breadth rather than depth and just uh, have a feel of the games on my list until I reach a conclusion that I want to pursue one of them in depth and actually go for the clear. So uh, my first bit of advice is to play often, play a broad range of games and come to a conclusion about what one that you want to actually go for the clear. I chose Raiden DX because I've got previous experience of playing Raiden games having done a one loop clear of the arcade mode in Raiden 4. Also with DX it's supposed to be one of the best in the series. I like the fact that the graphics look amazing with my scanline filter on the RetroArch display uh, and I also like the fact that Raiden DX is kind of one of the first models for what we now consider normal, which is having supposedly three levels of difficulty. Now, if you read anything or you play anything of Raiden DX Alpha, you will realize that uh, calling it a sort of novice course is a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, it's just as difficult uh, as a lot of other parts of uh, Raiden that you'll play in other games. But I think that probably the reason they call it the novice course is that 90% of of the enemies that you come across during your run will fire like aimed shots directly at you there's very little in the way of fixed spread shots and there's even less in the way of like overlapping spreads that you have to kind of know your way through so as long as you can practice playing raiden games and figure out the kind of secret to dodging which is in, in my experience mainly just making sure that you never ever 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 backtrack the way you just came if you've gone left and you want to go right go up a bit and then go right or go down a bit and then go right but never ever backtrack during raiden so once you've selected a shmup that you actually want to go about clearing the next most obvious thing to do is to try and break it down into manageable chunks and the way uh, that most shmups are set up the most obvious uh, and logical chunks that you can break it into are the stages to begin with. Now with Raiden DX Alpha, I'm afraid there aren't any stages and furthermore, there aren't any continues. So uh, you need to use a bit of imagination with RetroArch to set yourself up a number of save points. And as you can imagine, this does kind of necessitate being able to play your way from one save point up to where you next want to save it. But don't be too hard on yourself uh, at this stage. Just set yourself up five decent checkpoints that represent about as far as you can humanly go with this level of experience in the game. Now, once you've got those, you have five points from which to practice so that you can move and move and move them forward until you've got coverage of broadly the whole run. Um, but don't worry if it doesn't happen straight away. The point is you're supposed to be able to practice the parts that you can reach and build it up from there. Now, uh, once you've got a, a broad outline of what the course looks like, the next thing you're going to want to do, and this probably sounds a bit counterintuitive, but the way I do it is to stop playing the game and actually start writing some notes. And in order to make my note taking 
as flexible as possible, what I do is I use a program called Google Sheets, which is a spreadsheet program. It's free to use if you have a Google account. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, then in all likelihood, you have got a Google account that you use to log into YouTube. Um, you can use uh, another spreadsheet program like Excel if you happen to have bought it, uh, or you can use any form of, I guess, text editor. It just happens that I like to keep things in the square boxes because uh, it makes it feel more logical to me. The first notes I normally write are quick and simple. What is each stage? Like, where is it set? I.e., are you in a forest? Are you in space? Um, and then what is the boss of that stage? What does it look like? You know, do you know the name or give it your own name? So you just have a simple, normally it would be like, what, five to seven levels that you've just written down. It's this stage and it's this boss. This is my early notes on Raiden DX, and you can see that I've kind of tried to divide it. There are certain bigger enemies that crop up during the game, and I kind of tried to treat them at first as bosses and try and make out that there were five of them, and it was kind of logically broken down into levels like that. Now, later on, I kind of made that a bit more sophisticated, but this was where I started out. So for each level, you just want to kind of have an idea of what it is, and then once you I've got the game split down like that. You can start adding detail to the levels and identifying parts that you find difficult. Because like in every shmup, there are going to be sections which even if it's in the fifth stage or the seventh stage, some of it is going to be quite straightforward. Some of it is just going to be popcorn enemies and you know, you can blast and kind of move left to right and it's quite straightforward and then some of it is going to be fiendish and it's going to be designed to trip you up and you want to capture that level of detail as you go through your note making. Now again this is possibly counterintuitive but I like to stop playing the game and actually watch other people's replays with the spreadsheet open so that I can take the detailed notes. I don't personally like trying to copy other players and you know, work out their detailed strats. I'm usually not a uh, high enough level to copy those. What I'm trying to do is make sense to myself of what enemies are in each part of each stage. And once I've got that written down, then I stop watching the video replays because I'm not trying to copy them. I'm going to go back to the game and start trying to figure out my own strats. And that's what I find fun about this hobby. Obviously, if you're shooting for a world record score, you might find that you need to copy strats. And there's a route that's been figured out that's optimal for scoring. But to be honest, you know, that's if you want to go after the world records. If you just want to play the games and have fun and try and get the one loop clears, then feel free to design runs that suit your own strengths as a player. What we're looking at here is my detailed spreadsheet where I was breaking down the game into what I realized was uh, it's not so much in stages and it's not so much divided by bosses. It's really divided by the changes in the background landscape. I'm going to post a link below to a recent post on Twitter, which has scans from a Japanese magazine back when the game was released that showed the complete background map from start to finish. Check it out. It's pretty cool. So as you can see here in column A, I've got the basic descriptions of the types of landscape. And then in column B, I've got each of those bits of landscape divided into the kinds of encounters that you get piece by piece as you go along. Uh, column C, I've got notes. So this is somewhere where I can write down questions to myself or suggestions about how to do things. And you can see that I also um, went the extra mile and recorded where the item drops are on the map uh, and also had a go at looking up some of the secrets, uh, which is a kind of thing that Raiden is a bit famous for, particularly uh, Raiden DX. And so I decided I would try and do some of them, but I wasn't going by any means for like 100% secrets run. Once I've got a full spreadsheet of detailed notes about everything that I'm going to come across in the game, then my second to last stage is obviously practice. And for this, I will make sure that I don't just keep on starting at the beginning and trying to get a little bit further and a little bit further. That approach, uh, which obviously you are stuck with in the arcade, but not when you uh, have these games at home with a practice mode and save states and whatever, um, you really are better off splitting it up and practicing different sections on different days. Don't leave the end of the game till last. Make sure that you divide your time between the stages kind of equally uh, and make sure that you're giving yourself a healthy amount of practice at the later part. So you can see on my spreadsheet, I divided the game up into nine different saves where the ninth one was the final boss. And that's how I 
would practice is just loading up save state from between one and nine and just going for those at different times of the week. The final stage of putting the run together is very obviously doing full runs uh, but don't bother doing this until you really do feel comfortable that you've kind of answered all your own questions about how to approach all the different encounters that you're going to face on the run and also I guess at this point you have to be honest with yourself about what it is that you want to achieve you know if you just want to push it over the line and get your single clear under any circumstances you know no lives left no bombs left then go for it you know everybody who has cleared any one of these shmups has made their first clear with you know very few resources left you know in a desperate struggle to get over the line and that is absolutely legit if that's how uh, you want to to do it for this run because i knew i was going to be making these videos i kind of wanted to polish it a bit more until i had something that i could say yeah okay i'm happy with that and there are a few things in there that people can learn from so guys uh, i'm going to wrap it up there i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, if you have please give us a like uh, if you want to see more of this then please add the shmups level up playlist to your library this is a slightly different thing you might not have done before but then uh, you will have access to all the videos which i gather from other channels if you subscribe to my channel i'm going to post promos for anything new that i stick on there but otherwise i'm going to put it on the kind of usual discords uh, and socials so yeah thanks very much for tuning in uh, until next time from 1cc take care